Hey guys, when we talk about LTE peak data rate, we hear many terms such as 100 Mbps, 300 Mbps. But do we know how we reach to this figure? Do we know what are the various factors and assumptions that affect possible data rate in LTE? Today in this video, I will talk about all the factors that affect peak data rate in LTE. Here is the breakup of the topics that we will discuss in this video. First, I will explain all the factors that affect data rates, such as bandwidth, multiplexing technique, modulation and coding scheme, and UE category. Then we will calculate uplink and downlink data rate for a few different configurations and see how these factors affect data rate. Guys, I would assume you know basics of LTE physical layer, such as resource block, slot duration, and bandwidth. If you are not sure about these concepts, I would strongly recommend you to go through my another video on LT physical layer. Link of this video is given in comment section. There is no point in proceeding with this video until the physical layer concepts are clear to you. Let's talk about factors that affect peak data rate in LTE. Very first such factor is available bandwidth. We know LTE supports flexible bandwidth, that is, 1.4 MHz, 3 MHz, 5 MHz, 10 MHz, 15 MHz, and 20 MHz. But this total bandwidth is not available for actual data transmission. 10% of total bandwidth is assumed to be used for guard band. Let's take an example of 20 MHz bandwidth and calculate how much bandwidth is actually available for data transmission if we remove this guard band. 10% of 20 MHz is 2 MHz, and this 2 MHz is used as guard band. Therefore, effective bandwidth will be 18 MHz. We already know carrier spacing in LTE is 15 kHz, and there are 12 subcarriers in a resource block. So, bandwidth in one resource block will be 15 kHz into 12. That will come out to be 180 kHz. Number of resource block in effective bandwidth of 18 MHz will be 18 MHz divided by 180 kHz that will come out to be 100. Similarly, we can calculate number of resource block for each available bandwidth in LTE and get results as mentioned in this table. So we can conclude that more is the available bandwidth, more is the data transmission capability. Second factor is Type of multiplexing used. LT supports both types of multiplexing, FDD as well as TDD. FDD is also called pair spectrum. It means when we say 20 MHz FDD bandwidth, it has a pair of 20 MHz bandwidth, that is 20 MHz bandwidth for downlink and 20 MHz for uplink. TDD is called unpaired spectrum. It means when we say 20 MHz TDD bandwidth, it has only 20 MHz data shared between uplink and downlink. FDD has same bandwidth in downlink and uplink, so it is said to have symmetric bandwidth. But TDD has asymmetric bandwidth, as total bandwidth available is shared by uplink and downlink. In TDD, radio frame uplink downlink configuration decides how much bandwidth will be allocated to uplink and how much bandwidth will be allocated to downlink. There are total seven possible TDD radio frame configurations to decide this. Selection of TDD configuration is an operator's choice and service model. If the service model is heavily downloading based, operator may be used TDD config 2 or TDD config 5. If service model is heavily uploading based, Operator may use TDD config 0 or TDD config 6. If service model is symmetric or almost same for downlink and upload, operator may use TDD config 1 or TDD config 3. Third factor is modulation and coding scheme. Let's first talk about modulation. LT supports modulation in schemes such as QPSK. 16QAM and 64QAM. Each of the modulation has its own bit carrying capacity per symbol. 
one QPSK symbol can carry two bits of data. One 16QAM symbol can carry four bits of data. And one 64QAM symbol can carry six bits of data. Now coding. Coding is used for forward error correction. Coding way describes the efficiency of a particular modulation scheme. For example, if we say 16 QAM with coding rate of 0.5, it means this modulation has 50% of efficiency. That is, a 16 QAM symbol can carry 4 bits of data, but with coding rate of 0.5, it can carry only 2 bits of data, and rest of the 2 bits will be redundant information. The combination of modulation and coding rate is called modulation and coding scheme. This table shows MCS index and modulation order, which describes the type of modulation. We will talk about third column TBS index later. Fourth factor is UE category. There are many factors that vary based on the UE category, such as number of antenna supported in uplink and downlink, transport block size supported in uplink and downlink, modulation scheme supported in uplink and downlink. We will calculate data rate for category 3 and category 6 UE and we will see how these factors affect data rate. Now let's calculate downlink and uplink data rate for 20 MHz bandwidth. As we calculated before, 20 MHz channel bandwidth has 100 resource blocks. One resource block has 12 subcarriers. One subframe is of 1 millisecond. One time slot has seven of DM symbols when normal cyclic prefix is used. One of DM symbol has six data bits when 64 QAM is used as modulation scheme. Therefore, number of bits in a subframe are 100 resource blocks into 12 subcarriers in a resource block into two slots in a subframe into seven modulation symbols in a slot into 6 data bits in one OFDM symbol that will come out to be 100800 bits. Now we can calculate data rate. So data rate would be 100 Mbps. If 4 by 4 MIMO is used, peak data rate would be 4 into 100 Mbps that will come out to be 400 Mbps. And if 3 by 4 coding is used to protect the data, we will still get 0.75 into 403 Mbps. So roughly it will come out to be 300 Mbps as peak data rate. Guys, this is just a theoretical data rate and we have considered that all the conditions are favorable like uh, uh, 64 QAM is there and there is no loss on air interface. So you may not get the same data rate when you do throughput testing in field. There is an another way of calculating data rate by using tables given in specification 36.213. This table shows mapping among MCS index, modulation order, TBS index, where TBS means transport block size. TBS index column refers to the another table presented in the same specification. This table indicates the number of bits that can be transmitted in a subframe for a given bandwidth. You can notice in this table 400 PRBs, number of bits that can be transmitted in a transport block are 75376. Note, this figure is mentioned after considering the controlling overhead. So, this figure shows the actual data bits that can be transmitted. Now we will calculate downlink data rate using these two tables. For 100 resource blocks, when MCS index is 28, TBS is 75376. It means 75376 bits in a subframe. As we know, duration of subframe is 1 millisecond. So number of bits in one second will be 75376000 bits per second. If 4 by 4 MIMO is used, then we can calculate the data rate in the downlink would be 300 Mbps. 
data rate calculation for TDD. Till now, whatever we calculated was for FDD. For a TDD system, throughput calculations are somewhat more complex as compared to FDD system, as same spectrum is used by uplink, downlink, and the guard period. Remember, guard period is used for transition from downlink to uplink. We will consider following parameters for throughput calculation for TDD. Bandwidth, 20 MHz. TDD configuration, 2. This configuration has got 6 subframes for downlink transmission, 2 subframes for uplink transmission, and 2 subframes as spatial subframes. A spatial subframe configuration, 7. In this configuration, 10 OFDM symbols are used for downlink PDS and 2 OFDM symbols are used for uplink PDS. Remaining 2 OFDM symbols are used as guard period. As per TBS 26, for downlink, for 100 resource blocks, 7537.6 data rates can be transmitted in a subframe. Similarly, as per TBS index 21, for uplink, for 100 resource blocks, 51024 data bits can be transmitted in a subframe. Formula for downlink throughput would be throughput by downlink frames into efficiency plus throughput by downlink PDS into efficiency and the combination is multiplied by number of antenna. You may question why do we consider efficiency in this formula. See, in TDD, downlink subframes are not transmitted all the time. For example, in TDD configuration 2, only 6 out of 10 subframes are used for downlink. For the rest of the time, there is no downlink transmission. So, efficiency is 60% for downlink when configuration 2 is used. Similarly, spatial subframe is transmitted only twice with configuration 2. So, its efficiency would be 20%. Putting all these values in the formula for downlink for CAT3 UE, we will get this. And if we put all the values in this formula and we calculate, then the final outcome would be 112 Mbps. In the same manner, formula for uplink throughput would be throughput by uplink frames into efficiency plus throughput by uplink PDS into efficiency into number of antenna. Putting all the values in the formula as per CAT3 UE, we will get, and after doing the final calculation, we will get uh, the uplink transmission data rate is 12 Mbps. That's all for today, folks. Hope you would have enjoyed this video. If it is so, hit the like button. Also, share your comments so that I can make these videos more useful. My next video will be about self-search procedure in LTE. Keep waiting till then. Bye-bye.